In this video, we will discuss one-sided limits and continuity. Consider the function f of x equals x minus one if x is less than zero and x plus one if x is greater than or equal to zero. From the graph below, we can see that f does not have a limit as x approaches zero because no matter how close we get to zero, f of x takes on values close to one if x is positive and values close to negative one if x is negative. Therefore, f of x cannot be close to a single number L no matter how close x is to zero. If we restrict x to be greater than zero, we see that f of x can be made as close to one as we please by taking x sufficiently close to zero. In this situation, we say that the right-hand limit of f as x approaches zero, or the limit as x approaches zero from the right is one, written the limit as x approaches zero from above is f of, f, uh, as of f of x equals one. Likewise, if we restrict x to be less than zero, f of x can be made as close to negative one as we like by taking x sufficiently closer to zero. And we say that the limit as of f as x approaches zero from the left, or the left-hand limit of f as x approaches zero is negative one. And write the limit as x approaches zero from below is f of f of x equals negative one. The function f has the right-hand limit L as x approaches A from the right, written the limit as x approaches A uh, from the right of f of x equals L. If the values of f of x can be made as close to L as we please by taking x sufficiently close to, but not equal to A and to the right of A. Similarly, the function f has the left-hand limit M as x approaches a from the left, written the limit as x approaches a from below of f of x equals m. If the value of f of x can be made as close to m as we please by taking x sufficiently close to, but not equal to a, and to the left of a. Let f be a function that is defined for all values of x close to x equals a, with the possible exception of a itself. Then the limit as x approaches a from above f of x equals the limit as x approaches a from below of f of x equals l. Thus, the two-sided limit exists if and only if the one-sided limits exist and are equal. Let f of x equal negative x if x is less than or equal to zero and the square root of x if x is greater than zero. Show that the limit as x approaches zero of f of x e exists by studying the one-sided limits of f as x approaches zero. For x less than or equal to zero, the limit as x approaches f of x equals the limit as x approaches zero of negative x, which is zero. And for x greater than zero, the limit as x approaches zero of f of x equals the limit as x approaches zero of the square root of x, which again equals zero assuming we are approaching from above. If we are approaching from below, the limit does not exist because the square root of a negative number does not exist. But since the limit as x approaches below of f of x is equal to the limit as x approaches zero from above of f of x and that they're both equal to zero, the limit as x approaches zero of f of x equals zero. Now let g of x equal negative one if x is less than zero and one if x is greater than or equal to zero and show that the limit as x approaches zero of g of x does not exist. We have the limit as x approaches zero from below of g of x equals negative one and the limit as x approaches zero from above of g of x equals one. The one-sided limits are not equal so we can conclude that the limit as x approaches zero of g of x does not exist by theorem three. A function is said to be continuous at a number x equals a if three things are true of the function at that value. First, the limit of the function exists, f of a is defined. The limit of the function exists, the limit as x approaches a of f of x is, exists, and the value of the function at a is equal to the limit of a. f of a equals the limit as x approaches a of f of x. An old calculus professor of mine said it this way, you've got to be something, you've got to want to be something, and you've got to be what you want to be. If any of these things is not true at A, we say that F is discontinuous at A. 
We can also say that f is continuous on an interval if f is continuous at every number in the interval. Find the values of x for which each function is continuous. f of x equals x plus two. The function is continuous everywhere because the three conditions for continuity are satisfied for all values of x. This is true for all linear and polynomial functions. g of x equals x squared minus four over x minus two. The function is continuous everywhere except when x equals two since g is not defined there. If x equals two, the denominator is zero. H of x equals x plus two if x is not equal to two and one if x equals two. The function is continuous everywhere except when x equals two since f of two equals one and the limit as x approaches, um, yeah, the limit as x approaches two of f of x equals three and thus the value of the function at two is not equal to the limit at two. And f of x equals negative one if x, uh, uh, if x is less than zero and one if x is greater than or equal to zero. The function is continuous everywhere except when x equals zero, since the limit does not exist at x equals zero. The limits from either side are different. Properties of continuous functions. The continuous function f of x equals c is continuous everywhere. The identity function f of x equals x is continuous everywhere. If f and g are continuous at x equals a, then f of x to the nth power, where n is a real number, is continuous at x equals a whenever it is defined at that number. And f plus or minus g is continuous at x equals a, and f, of g, f times g is continuous at x equals a, and f divided by g is continuous at x equals a provided that g of a does not equal zero. Using these properties of continuous functions, we can prove the following as well. A polynomial function y equals p of x is continuous at every value of x, and a rational function r of x equals p of x divided by q of x is continuous at every value of x where q of x does not equal zero. Find the values of x for which each function is continuous. A f of x equals 3x cubed plus 2x squared minus x plus 10. f of x is a polynomial function and thus it is continuous everywhere. b, g of x equals 8x to the 10th minus 4x plus one divided by x squared plus one. Since x squared plus one can never be equal to zero, the rational function g of x is continuous everywhere. h of x, c, h of x equals 4x cubed minus 3x squared plus one divided by x squared minus three x plus two. The denominator of the function is equal to zero when x equals one or x equals two. So h of x is continuous everywhere except at these values of x. Theorem four, the intermediate value theorem. If f of x is a continuous function on a closed interval a, b, and m is any number between f of a and f of b, then there is at least one number c in the interval a, b, such that f of x equals m. This is illustrated by the images below. We can see that for some value m, there is at least one place, uh, if m is between f of a and f of b, and the function is continuous, there is at least one place where the function will cross the line y equals m. Theorem five, existence of zeros of a, contis, a continuous function. If f, of, if f is a continuous function on a closed interval a, b, and of f of a and f of b have opposite signs, then there is at least one solution of the, the equation f of x equals zero in the interval a, b. The property states that if the graph of a continuous function goes from above the x-axis to below the x-axis or vice versa, it must cross the x-axis. This is not necessarily true of a discontinuous function. It's clearly true because of the intermediate value theorem. If f of a is a positive number and f of b is a negative number or vice versa, then zero is between those two values and thus there is some value c for which f of c equals zero. For example, let f of x equal x cubed plus x plus one. Show that f is continuous for all values of x compute f of negative one and f of one and use the results to deduce that there must be at least one number x equals c such that f of c equals zero. First, f of x is a polynomial, so by the properties of continuous functions, f of x is continuous everywhere. f of negative one is negative one cubed 
plus negative one plus one, which is negative one minus one plus one equals negative one. F of one equals one cubed plus one plus one equals one plus one plus one equals three. Since F of negative one is negative and F of one is positive and F is continuous everywhere, by theorem five or by the intermediate value theorem, there is some C such that negative one is less than C is less than one and F of C equals zero. <laughs>